Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're going to be exploring a numerical example to compute the stress caused by an applied point load. And in particular, we're actually going to have two applied point loads we're going to be considering. So let's look at the given information. It says that point loads are acting at points A and B, which are on the ground surface. And then the problem is asking us to compute the overall total stress at point C and assume the soil is dry. So let's take a look at the given figure. In this left figure, we have a plan view. That means you're looking down on the ground surface like a bird's eye view. And where um, the loads are applied are at these points A and B, okay? And then point C is the point beneath the ground surface that we're interested in computing the stress at. So we have this diagonal distance from point A to point C of 12 feet, and we have another diagonal distance from point B to point C of eight feet. Now where we have to be careful is that the this 12 feet and eight feet are actually on the ground surface. They're not going into the ground, they're on the ground surface, okay? So let's take a look at the profile view and help us visualize what's going on better. The profile view shows that point A has the 10 kips acting at it and point B has 20 kips acting at it. Those are your two loads at point A and B. And then the eight feet and the 12 feet would be on the ground surface. So for example, the 12 feet would be this distance right here. And then the eight feet would be this distance right here. Now the depth below the ground surface is 10 feet. So again, those 12 and eight feet are, at, are on the ground surface and then the depth below the ground surface of the point that we're really interested in, point C, is 10 feet below the ground surface. We were also given some soil property information. So the soil specific gravity is 2.7 and the void ratio is 0.85. So now that we can visualize what's going on, let's go ahead and tackle the solution. Now, the problem says the overall total stress at point C is what we need. So let's first compute the stress at C due to the soil alone, okay? So the stress at C due to soil above it is known as what we call overburden stress. And this is just going to be a calculation that hopefully you, you remember from before. That's total stress equals effective stress equals the unit weight of the soil times the depth. Now, the reason why we're able to say total stress equals effective stress is because we were told in the problem statement the soil is dry. So if the soil is dry, that means you don't have poor pressure and your total stress and effective stress are equal to one another. So we need the, the dry unit weight of the soil whenever we perform this calculation. And so we can use a phase equation. Um, maybe you're familiar with this, G sub S gamma water over one plus the void ratio. And so using this uh, specific gravity and void ratio given, we can compute this as 91.07 PCF. So I encourage you to use your own calculator and crank through these numbers just to make sure you get the same value I get. And then the total stress uh, at point C, which is the effective stress at point C due to the soil above it, is going to be equal to that 91.07 PCF times 10 feet. And so, of course, that's just going to be 910.7 PSF, pounds per square foot. So that's going to be part of our answer. And again, that's the stress at point C due to the soil above it alone. Now what we need to do is use one of Boussinesque's uh, equations to calculate the stress at point C due to the applied loads. So I'm gonna change colors here. I'm gonna say, now we're gonna use Boussinesque's, that's uh, from 1883, I believe is the reference year. 
equation to compute the stress at point C due to the applied loads that are at points A and B, okay? So let's go ahead and remind ourselves, what is that? Well, um, the governing equation for an applied point load at the ground surface causing a stress beneath the ground surface is uh, given in general as sigma z equals 3pz cubed all divided by 2 pi times r squared plus z squared raised to the five halves. And so we're gonna need to apply this equation twice, once for the load at point A and once for the load at point B. So let's go ahead and do that. For the load at point A, which is, uh, we can call that P sub A, and that was 10 kips if you wrote that down in your figure, we're gonna say that sigma sub Z, which is at point C due to this load, is three times 10 kips times 10 feet cubed, all divided by 2 pi times, now that radial distance from point A to point C, that's the 12 feet. That's this 12 feet here that we discussed earlier. So we're gonna say times 12 feet squared plus 10 feet squared, and we're gonna raise all of this to the five halves. So punch this in your calculator very carefully. If you do this uh, carefully, you should end up getting 5.134 PSF. So be careful. If you punch this in your calculator as it is because you've got 10 kips here, you're actually gonna get 0 0.005134 KSF, but we'll just go ahead and convert it to PSF all in one, one swoop, okay? So we're gonna do the same kind of thing again, but for the load that's at point B. So point B was um, had a load of 20 kips, all right? So we're gonna, again, compute sigma sub Z at point C due to the load at point B, okay? And that's gonna be three times 20 kips times the depth cubed, which is 10 feet cubed, all divided by two pi times the quantity. Now we need to look at that radial distance, the radial distance on the ground surface from point B to a point above point C, right, on the ground surface. So that's gonna be uh, eight feet squared, plus again, the depth squared, so that's 10 feet squared. And we're gonna raise that quantity to the five halves as well, and we'll punch this through. You'll get a number in KSF, uh, but if you convert that to PSF, you should get 27.7 PSF or, of course, 0 0.0277 KSF. So finally, the total stress at point C is going to be the sum of these three stresses we computed already. The stress due to the soil above it, the stress due to point A applied at the ground surface, and the stress due to the load at point B at the ground surface. So if we add those three values up, I'm gonna pull out my TI-36X calculator. I'm gonna say 910.7 plus 5.134 plus 27.7, and I get about 944 PSF as my final answer. Now, one thing we wanna make a note of, please note that the largest component um, of these three stresses is actually due to the soil above the point of interest. So all the soil that's on top of point C, that's what's actually uh, causing the greatest amount of stress at point C. These um, loads at point A and point B are actually causing significantly lower loads at point C compared to the soil sitting on top of it. And that goes back to the whole idea of stress dissipation. As we investigate points that are farther and farther away from where loads are applied, the magnitude of the stress 
due to the applied loads at the ground surface actually decreases as we move away from the point of load application. So again, that goes back to the whole concept of stress dissipation. So if you found this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.